He make it all. God bless you for watching. God bless you for watching. Feel free to share the video. Invite your friends. Invite somebody you love. And they will be blessed. And you shall be blessed too. Ramba de Kondirabu Santa. You shall love the Lord. That make it all. You shall love the Lord. Today we're just going to love God. We're going to talk about the love of God. We're going to talk about how God loves the world. How God loves you and me. And we're going to talk about how we are supposed to love God. I will love the Lord. Good morning everybody. Yes, now I can see your comments. The first one I was trying to do, I don't know what happened to it. Then make it all. Feel free to share the video. Invite your friends, invite somebody that you want to be blessed. I will love the Lord. Amen. And by the way, I have a date for the fasting. The three days fasting. I have a date for it. I will love the Lord. That may He make it all. Just worship the Lord wherever you are. Tell God you love Him. Tell Him you love Him. Rapane pokola sante nebul santa. Just tell Him you love Him. Tell Him how much you love Him. Raple sako le kanto rehe. Tell God you love Him. That make it all. Rapanerebo Santa Regarabo Santene Rapapanere de Sola. Everybody, everybody love the Lord. Let make it on my Wi Fi. My Wi Fi, I think, is acting up. Get on. I love you, Jesus. Yes, that's right. Tell him you love him. Ha! Jesus, I love you. I love you, Jesus. For everyone that wants to. Join us to fast for the three days that I was telling you guys about yesterday. It's going to be from tomorrow, Hallelujah. which is Thursday. It will be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You Tomorrow's date is the 13th. So we'll end it on the 15th. It's only three days. We've done 12 days. We've done seven days. We've done longer days. So if you want to join us. Just get ready. Tomorrow we'll start fasting. The Holy Spirit told me to fast with you guys for some days now, but I've been waiting for the perfect time. I didn't know what date to start. But when I talked about it yesterday, and I prayed to God about it, and He said I should do it on Thursday to Saturday. So, if you're going to love to join us to fast, just get ready. Tomorrow we'll start. We'll start praying. Um, we normally pray um, four times a day. So we'll start 12 midnight. We'll pray from 12 midnight today. I'm going to post the, um, the prayer line number on my page and also on this video. I will love the Lord. He make it all. He make it all. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I will love the Lord. He make it all. I just love God. I just love Him. I have loved people in the past so much and they've broken my heart 
But God, since I started to love Him, He has never broken my heart. Since I started to love Jesus, oh, He has never hurt my feelings. I have never been disappointed. It's been good all the way. He says we should love people the way we love ourselves. But I have loved people before, even more than I love myself. And at the end, they stabbed me in the back. Some of them. But with God, there is no backstabbing. He loves us first, even before we started to love Him. That's why He sent Jesus to die for us. There's no backstabbing with God. When you love Him, you're not making a mistake. You're doing the right thing when you love Him. Some of you love your husbands way more than anyone in this world, than even God. God doesn't like that. God doesn't want you to love anyone beyond Him, like more than the way you love Him. He has to come first before anybody. Because God gave you that husband and God can take that husband away from you. Or if that husband leaves you, what are you going to do? The one that you loved so much. But God never leaves you. He created you. I love you, Jesus. I will love the Lord. Rap and the rebel shanting in any. Ola hante kuruba shanting in any. I love you, Jesus. Just tell him you love him. Just tell him you love him. I woke up this morning. I got my son ready. I started getting ready too because you know I work with God. Every morning when I wake up, I take a shower, get ready, and wait for the message. Because that's my job. The way you go to your job, 9 to 5, or is it 8 to 5? Is the way I get ready waiting for God to tell me what to do. I am employed by Him. He's my employer. So while I was getting my son ready, He was giving me several messages. One of the messages He gave me was about having faith, no doubt. He was telling me about how Jesus was walking on water. And one of the disciples started walking with him. And all of a sudden he started to sink. Because he doubted while he was on the water. And then he gave me another message. And another message. But when I was taking my son to school. I was driving. I dropped up my son. Coming back home. There was a preacher preaching. There's a station that I listened to. I think it was 105.7 or 105.9. It's a gospel radio station. They always preach and I love listening to them when I'm in the car. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit is saying, why don't you just tell them to love God? He said, why don't you just tell them to love God? Why don't you just tell them how much God loves them? I say, yeah. I started to smile. He said, why don't you just tell them to love God? Because that's the ultimate. That is the greatest commandment. Once they love God, everything else you tell them will make sense. But if they don't love God, it doesn't matter what message you preach to them. It's not going to make sense to them. And this song started to play in my spirit. And then the Holy Spirit started telling me how Jesus died for us. How God loves us so much. This message will always be the same. It will never change. 20 years from now, I'm still going to preach these messages if I'm still here. 
the love of God never changes. Your love changes. Sometimes you love him, sometimes you don't. But his love never changes. He loves you all the time. He loves you always. You see, just tell them to love God. <laughs> that is the best message ever. Telling them to love God because that's the first commandment. Once they love God, everything else you tell them, they will understand because now they love God. But if they don't love God, whatever you tell them after that, they're not going to get it because they don't love God. They don't know what you're talking about. Jesus, I love you. I will love the Lord. He make it all. Feel free to share this video. Invite your friends to watch. They will be blessed. If you love God, you will obey His commandments. If you love God, you will run from sin. If you love God, you would love your neighbors just as you love yourself. If you love God, you will be so easy to forgive and forget. If you love God, oh, you will never listen to the devil. Most times you pay attention to the devil because you don't love God. But if you love God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength... When the devil comes to whisper or talk to you, you will tell him, get thee behind me, Satan. Out of here. In the name of Jesus, you won't even entertain him. You won't even want to listen to what he has to say because you love God. If you love God, no man will tell you to come fornicate with him. If you love God, you will not want to steal. Because you don't want to hurt God. You don't want to hurt his feelings. Just like when you love your husband so much. You don't do things to hurt your husband. Because you love him so much. You do things to please him and make him happy. You don't go do things your husband tells you not to do. Because you love him, you will stay away from that. Some people, they love their husband so much that even when their husbands tell them not to keep some friends or talk to a particular person, they stop talking to that person just because they love their husband. They listen to their husband and they stop being friends with whoever they've been friends with forever just because they love God. They love their husband. So if you love God and God is saying, do not sin, you will stay away from sin because you love God. My voice, I've been shouting and praying so much. So my voice, I'm sure you can still hear me. Rap I love God. He make it all. We must love the Lord. He make it all. That's the first commandment. you stop loving God, God still loves you till the end. He's always so loving. God is love. His love never changes. Even parents, your parents sometimes, your mom or your dad, there's some parents that have disowned their children. They don't love them anymore because maybe they did something. But God never disowns you. God always loves you regardless. Even while we were still sinners, God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son to come and die for us. While we were sinners, not like we were righteous then, we were sinners. And he still sent his son, his only begotten son, to come die for us. Would you send your son to go die for sinners? Would you yourself be willing to die for people that hate you? 
No. What kind of love is that? Dying for your enemies. Dying for people that want to kill you. Dying for people that don't listen to you. That shows what kind of love he has for us. He watched them kill his only begotten son. It hurt him. But because he loved us so much, he let it happen. And his son too went through all that pain for us. What kind of love is this? What kind of love is this? Have you ever thought about this? Break it down and think about it. Put yourself in Jesus Christ's shoes. Ask yourself if you can do this. Or put yourself in God's shoes and say, Will I be able to send my only child to go die? Maybe it took you so many years to get that only child. Maybe you've been looking for children. You couldn't have kids. And then all of a sudden, maybe 10 years later, you have a child. And you have to go let that child die for people that are so wicked. Would you do it? Have you ever thought about that? These people you're going to send your son to die for. They don't love you. They don't love your son. If anything, they want to kill you and your son. But you still send your son to God die for them. And you don't have any other children. Your only son. Would you do it? You know how long it took you to have a son. And then you watch them. Not only sending them. You actually watch them kill him. But you, you're willing to let your son die. Because you love those people that hate you and your son. You can't do it. I can't do it. I can't. I'm not going to lie. I, I can't. I only have one son. And I don't, I don't know if I want to have any other kids. I love my son so much. I'm not going to let anyone come and crucify my son for people that hate me. But God did that. That's exactly what he did. Jesus Christ had no sin. He came and carried our own sin on that cross. And then we can't just love him back. That's all he wants. Just love him back. He said, just love him. With all your heart, your mind, your soul. Is that too much to ask for someone that did that for us? That's not too much. That's nothing compared to what he did. Every day you wake up, you have to tell him you love him. And not just tell him. Obey his commandments. Live a holy life. To prove that you really love him. God told me that. My mission here is to make people love him. To bring people to love God. To win souls. To make people love him. He says he's going to perform miracles and all of that. Through me. But that's not my reason here. My reason here is to make people love him. To make people fall in love with him and Jesus. A lot of people that follow me, they always send me messages saying they love God more now. Some of you say this on the video. That's why I'm here. To make you love God. To tell you why you should love God. To open your eyes to see why you have to love Him. Because once you love Him, everything else will fall into place. Everything else will begin to make sense. Somebody told me she did not love God before until she started watching my videos. And now she says she's made some covenant with God that there's some things she will never do anymore that she used to do. I was like, wow, that's awesome. Because once you start to love God, nobody will be coming to tell you not to sin. You will not sin because you love Him so much. And now you have a personal relationship with Him. You don't need your pastor to come tell you to stop sinning. You don't need me to come tell you. You already know that God hates sin. And because you and him are like best of buddies right now. And you love him so much. You're not going to want to sin to hurt him.
Nobody will tell you not to sin. It's just like your real dad. You try to make your dad happy because you love your dad. If your dad said he doesn't like something, you don't do it because you love your dad. You don't want your dad thinking about things you did because you love your dad. You check on your dad, you call on your dad. Dad, hi, hello dad, how are you today? Have you eaten, are you doing well? When was the last time you checked on God or Jesus? When was the last time you went into your closet to pray and have one-on-one -on -one with your daddy, God? You check on your parents. Do you check on God? Or whenever you go to God, you just lay all your problems to Him. But do you ask Him, God, how are you doing today? Have I been good? Do I need to do something? God loves you more than your daddy loves you. God loves you more than your mother loves you. If you think they love you, then you don't know how much God loves you. If they love you 50%, God loves you 1 million percent. So if you check on your parents, you should check on God too. How do you check on Him? Worship Him. Praise Him. Pray to Him. Meditate. Read His Word. Have a good fellowship with Him. I love my dad so much. I love my mother so much. I make sure they're okay all the time. But I love God more. So I make sure he's fine with my, my, my life, my lifestyle. I make sure the way I'm living is pleasing unto him. If I cannot hurt my mother, if I cannot hurt my dad, then why will I hurt God? Why will I hurt Jesus? I fear God more than anybody. I live to please God. There's some things that I used to do that when I think of how much I love God, I don't want to do them no more. That's why when God tells me to do something, it just weakens me. When I get angry and I block somebody and God tells me go and unblock the person, I don't even think twice about it. I just go to my block list and I just click on block because I want to make him happy because I love him. That rebellious spirit that I used to have, I don't do it with God anymore. Before I used to be so rebellious, but because I love God so much, I let go of it. Plus, it didn't really bring any good thing to me anyway. When I wake up in the morning, good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, God. Thank you for giving me life. I love you. What am I going to do today? What plans do you have for me today? Hallelujah. Even before I say hello to my parents, I say hello to God first because I love him. You have to love God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. And then make it all. He make it all things. I love you, Jesus. I have some scriptures for you guys. He said that he has saved some of you from accidents. I can hear it so clear. He said he has saved some of you from accidents. From deaths. Some of you would have died. There were times that some of you did not have any money to pay anything. But he came through for you. But you didn't even remember to give him thanks. You didn't say anything. You didn't thank him. You just thought it was normal. He fought your enemies while you were sleeping. Because he loves you. He sends angels to guide you when you're when you're by your like when you're asleep, even as you're watching this video, he has assigned some angels to be with you. 
Even though some people don't love him, he still assigned angels to follow them and be with them. Who does that? In real life, when somebody doesn't love you, you just, you like, man, I'm just not going to worry about this person. They don't even care about me anyway. Man, just bye. But he doesn't do that. There was one day he gave me an example, right? Of how some people treat him. He gave me an example of how some people treat him. He said, just picture this. You have a father, right? And this father has done so much for you. It, it puts you in the best, the best school, the best university. He bought you a car. He gives you money to pay your bills. Even though you're old enough to work for yourself, he still gives you money. He calls you to wish you happy birthday. He does whatever you want. If you say you want to travel, he provides money for you to travel for your birthday, to do whatever. He just makes you happy. Anything you want, once you call him, Dad, I want this, he gives it to you. Any single thing you want, he gives it to you. And people are always telling you, you're so lucky, you have a good dad. Your dad is always giving you something. He's always there for you. And you're like, I know. But guess what? With all the goodness, the kindness, the love, and everything your dad does, you never check on your dad. When you even hear that your dad is sick, you don't come home and you're, you're the only child that your dad has. Sometimes the man is old, he's sick. Strangers will come take him to the hospital. You don't worry. On his birthday, you don't even call him to wish him happy birthday. And then maybe one day you come and you see that he's not feeling well and all you do is, Daddy, I need money for this. And then he says, go check in the drawer. I'm so, I'm so weak, I'm tired, I'm sick, I can't get up. Go check in the drawer. You will see some money there. Okay, dad, you get the drawer. Say, okay, dad, bye. Take care of yourself and you leave. You desert him. Even when you can see clearly that he needs you. And he's done so much for you. You're the only child he has. All his life he worked just to please you, to make you happy. But you don't care. You don't even remember his birthday. You don't care if he's happy. You've never checked on him to see if he's eating. Do you, do you see this picture that I'm making right now? That's how we treat God. God does so much for us. We could have died. But he said, no, let me give her more time. So maybe she would love me. If I give her more time, she would love me. Let me give her some more days, some more years. She wants a car. Let me make it possible for her to get a car. She wants to get married. Oh, I will give her a good husband. Sometimes he will send pastors, he will send people, even in your dream, he will appear to you and tell you to love him. You will wake up and act like you didn't hear anything. Even a pastor will say, God is calling you to repent. He loves you. You're like, please, I'm not repenting now. What, what will I repent for? I don't want to be like that. He's sending you messages, calling you home. You don't come, but the only time you want to come home God, I need this. I want this. Why is this like this? I want this. I need financial breakthrough. I need miracle money. I need this. I need that. Even though you've deserted him, he looks up. He looks down and he's like, go give her miracle money. Give her that. I love her. You get it. You forget to come back and say, God, thank you for this. You go spend it. You go do whatever. The next time you come is, God, why is my life like this? Why is my life like this? I want this, I want that. Remember, he just gave you something. You've not even thanked him. It's like anytime you come to him, anytime you come home to see him, it's just to get something real quick and go. You're not checking on him to see if he's okay, if he's happy, if you've been treating him well, or have you been living the way he wants. You don't care. You are selfish. All you care about is what you want. 
You are a user. You are wicked. That's how God feels. A few days ago, I did a video, and when Jesus was speaking through me, He said, Why have you forsaken me? I came and I died for you. Why are you rejecting me? When I watched that video and I was hearing that, I was crying. Because sometimes I don't really know what I say. I have to go back and watch them. A lot of people are forsaking God. A lot of people are forsaking Jesus. They are rejecting Him. They are denying Him. They are ashamed of Him. They don't love Him. But He's been doing things for them since the day they were born. He still loves them, but they hate Him so much. Why? And even when they ask for something, they ask like, why in my life? Like, did they complain? They don't ever say thank you for that thing you gave me. Do you know it's important to thank God? God loves it when you thank Him all the time. God loves it when you thank Him. That's why He says, in all things, give thanks. This is what God wants from you through Christ Jesus. He likes a thankful heart. It shows gratitude. It shows you are grateful. It shows you appreciate him. Just like the dad story that I said. If you could tell your dad, thank you so much dad for buying this car for me. I promise to, to be a, a good child. How are you today daddy? Do you need anything? Can I come cook for you? Are you feeling better? Let me, should I take you to the hospital? Show concern. Show that you care too. The way you show you care with God is, God, how are you today? Is my life pleasing unto you? Is there something that I need to change? What have I done that is making you unhappy? Please tell me so I can change it. Am I living a holy life? And then he will tell you, walk on your temper or do this. You know when you need to change or stop fornicating. He will just give you a list of things that you need to work on. Okay, daddy. Okay, God, I love you so much. I will work on it. Thank you, dad. I love you so much. Thank you for caring for me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for making me happy. I promise to work on this. He said, don't worry. You're not going to work on it alone. I will give you help. And then he gives you the Holy Spirit to help you to work on those things. To help you to be like Jesus. That's how much he loves you. Not only did Jesus come and die for you. He also, God is still giving you the comforter to help you. He's so good. He's such a good God. I've prayed for so many people. I will ask them, are you born again? Even yesterday, there was somebody. She had a long list of what she wanted from God. And the Holy Spirit said I should ask her if she's born again. And when I asked her, she said, no, she's not. Like she didn't say, yeah, and she said, no, I'm not. I was like, what are you waiting for? She said, I don't even know. I said, so are you ready to be born again? She said, yep. Yeah. <laughs> the Holy Spirit told me that she wasn't ready. She's only saying that because she wants me to pray for her. God knows your heart. He knows when you love him. He knows when you don't. Most of the people that are not born again, when they when you see the prayer request, they sent me to pray. One lady sent me a prayer request. It was so long. It was like a book. I was like, how am I going to read this? She said, everything is crashing in our life. I say, do you love God? Are you born again? I love God, but I don't know. I don't know. Things are just happening. I said, you don't love God. You're not born again. That's why the devil is messing with you like this. Are you ready to come to God? Do you even have faith? Do you even believe in God? She said, well, I have faith, but I don't know. These days, it's just things that are just happening. I don't know. Oh, there's another lady that sent me a message yesterday. Hallelujah. She said she's been married for almost, over, almost 18 years. She hasn't had any child. 
She's gone to so many pastors. She even traveled to Nigeria and just came back for deliverance. That she's just tired. The Holy Spirit told me to ask her this question. Do you believe in God or do you believe in man? That was a kind of strange question. Because I just go by what I hear. I said, do you believe in God or do you believe in man? She said, well, I believe in God, but it's just that I'm just tired of all this going. I said, no, 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 no. If you believe in God, then you wouldn't have to go to so many pastors. I said, do you believe that God answers my prayers? She said, well, I believe in your God. <laughs> I believe that your God will answer because I have seen testimonies on your wall. I said, but the other pastors that you went to their church, I'm sure they've had some good testimonies too. I'm sure they've had some good testimonies too. Isn't that why you went to their churches? You believe in the man of God. You believe in the people that God are using, but you don't believe in God. You don't believe in the God that they're praying to. You just believe in the people. That's not how it works. If you don't believe in God, even if I pray for you, it's not going to work. God knows your heart. You can run to 50 pastors. They will pray. They will fast for you. But if you don't believe, if you don't have faith, if you hate God, it's not going to work. I don't care what anybody tells you. I'm telling you this now. I'm telling you this right now. That's why some people... They've gone to everywhere. They've even gone to voodoo places. They just... All they need to do is start to love God. And things will just change. Love God. Seek Him first. Seek the kingdom of God first. Seek Jesus. Love Jesus. Allow Jesus into your life. Live a righteous life. And everything else will be added unto you. But they don't want to love God. They want to love the things that God gives them, but they don't want to love the maker. They want to love what he make it. He says, ye shall love the Lord that make it all. They didn't say you shall love what the Lord make it and not love him. You love him. He make it the things. Don't love the things that he make it and you don't love God. You have to love God because he's the one that makes the things, but you love the things instead of him. I pray that from today, whoever is watching this video, you will begin to love God like never before. In the name of Jesus, you will not hurt God. You will not grieve the Holy Spirit. You will not hurt Jesus. You will love God. You will obey his commandments. In the name of Jesus. You will stop running around to different pastors to pray for you. But you will call on God for help. Your father, your maker that knows exactly what you need for help. In the name of Jesus. God wants to have a relationship with everybody. All his children. So they can come to him directly. Don't get me wrong. It's good for a priest or a pastor or somebody to pray for you. But it's not good for you to depend on them. Depend on God. Depend on Jesus. Most of my disciples, my followers, they hardly come to me for prayers. Hardly ever. Only if they've tried and tried and then they come to me. Because they speak to God and God hears them and God speaks to them directly. They worship in spirit and in truth. I have a lot of followers that before they did not even know how to hear from God. But now they hear directly from God. Now they love God so much. They, some of them, they watched the Holy Ghost encounter that I did. The ones that couldn't come. They did not sleep the whole night. For 12 hours, they were up watching. The ones that came to the event, they were not tired for 12 hours. They were there with us because they love God. Now, they've never been in that kind of event for that long before. But because they love God, they saw 12 hours like two hours. 
You cannot be in his presence for 12 hours if you don't love him. It will be too long for you. But if you love him, 24 hours will go by in a flash. Even the three days. You will be in a camp for three days, praising God, worshiping, praying. You will think three days was just three hours. It will go by quick because you love him so much. You got lost in his presence. You don't want to leave his presence. When you go visit your dad that you love so much. Say your dad is out of town and you travel. Sometimes when you're living, you're crying by dad at the airport. You're crying. You don't want to leave. You want to stay with him all the time. That's how it is with God. You should love the Lord. That man. Make it all. Rabba Baba Sent it. You shall love the Lord. Rabba Baba 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 Baba. Radebo Sent it. Ragadebo Sent it. Rabba Baba Baba Sent it. I love you, Jesus. Everybody type that. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Do you know when you love Jesus, you make God happy? When you love Jesus, you love God. You can't love God unless you love Je Jesus first. You can't be saved unless you go through Jesus. He told me, come online. Just tell them to love God. That message will always be the same. Just tell them to love God. I could preach this same message in 500 countries. Or how many countries do they have in this world? In anywhere I go. I can make this my only message. And just tell people to love God. And the moment they love God, they repent. They're not going to want to sin. That message is so powerful because the love of God is the greatest commandment and the first commandment. Once they love God, they're not going to want to sin because they will know that God will be upset about that. But if I come all the time, I'm preaching about you will get miracle money, you will get this, you will get that. But I forget to tell you about loving God. That's not that's that's not good. That's not good. If I'm doing a video and you're watching me, stop sending me messages. You're distracting me. I said that the other day. I don't like that. When I'm in the spirit, don't send me a message to chat with me when you see me doing a video. Why are you doing that? Don't let the devil use you like that. Somebody messaged me. I say I'm doing a video. She said, I know I'm watching. Why would you message me when you know I'm doing a video? You're distracting me. I'm talking about God, loving God, and you're sending me a message. And you know that I'm in the spirit. Don't ever do that anymore. Otherwise, I'm going to block you because that's a distraction. And I mean it. When I'm in the spirit, don't distract me, please. Talking about my God. I'm telling you to love my God. And you're sending me a message. Why? It's different if you don't know I'm online. But if you are watching me, why are you messaging me? Can't you see it's a distraction? I love God so much that it makes me happy when I see people love him. And when I see people don't love him, I cry for them. It breaks my heart. I will love the Lord that make Some people come to me for prayers. I see them in chains. I see them tied up. I see like I see a dark 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 cloud all over them. And then I start to ask them, Do you love God? I don't know if I love God. Do you want to repent? I don't even know if I want to. Like I'm trying to bring them to God. And they're saying no. They don't want to. And I'm feeling so bad for them. Because I want to help them. But their case. They have to repent for me to help them. For me to pray for them. 
it's not, that's why sometimes, see, I don't come pray for somebody and there's no result. God tells me exactly how to do it so there will be a result. There are some people that he really wants them to repent before he will do anything. And when I try to tell them to repent, some of them will be like, well, let me go think about it. And then one lady, there was one lady, she was like, let me go think about it. And I was like, the reason you don't want to repent is because of fornication. It's because you have a man that you are sleeping with that is paying your bills. She was shocked. How did I know? I said, trust me. It leads to death. You don't have much time. She thought I was saying she was going to die soon. But this is what I was saying, what I was hearing. I say, it's not worth it. You're going through what you're going because of that same sin that you are thinking of committing. That's why you don't want to come to God. I've not heard from that lady again. I can't force anybody to repent. I can't even pray. I can pray, but if God is telling me that they need to repent, God is the one that answers the prayers. There are some people, God gives them specific instructions on what to do. They don't want to do it because they think it's the man of God that is telling them to do it. Or maybe just because they're just stubborn. If you don't do what God tells you to do, even if I pray and I fast for you, Hallelujah. it's in your hands. It's up to you to do that thing so God can move. And then you'll be like, no, but nothing is working for me. But God just told you to do something that you're refusing to do. If you love him, that would not even be a question for you to think about. You would do it right away. Say plaha to Kenehe and make it all. I just want you to love God. He make it all. Just love God, everybody. Love Jesus. Love him. Tarabo Sontanaha. Raparebo Sontanehe. Jesus came here. And he was just full of love. Oh, I was watching TBN the other day. I was telling you guys I was watching. They were showing the story of Jesus, but they were coming in a different approach. I don't know if I told you guys this two days or three days ago that it was midnight, like around 2.30, 3 in the morning. Our week, the weekend we had the revival. I was supposed to be sleeping, but I couldn't stop watching the movie. Cause, And then... They were showing a part where the lady, the prostitute lady, a lot of men brought some stones to stone the lady. And they brought the lady to Jesus and they say, Master, she was caught in, in adultery, in the act of adultery. That the law of Moses says something, whether they should stone her or whatever. That what do you say? That time Jesus was busy writing something on the ground. And then Jesus said, let the person that has no sin, that has not sinned before, cast the first stone. All of a sudden, they all looked at themselves. And they just threw their stones away and walked away. And then he went to the lady. He said, where are the people that were trying to stone you? She said, they all left. He said, well, he's not going to judge her. That she should go and sin no more. And then another lady was in the crowd that one too i think she looked like a prostitute or something she now came to him and he was not he was he was living with his disciple in this movie i'm telling you of the movie i watched on tv he was telling the lady he said you can follow us this is not the lady they were stoning another lady that looked like she was probably doing the same thing the woman was doing she's never seen anyone show love to maybe a prostitute or someone that does that kind of sin so she was wondering and it was like, you can follow us. She said, I'm not following you. Nobody tells me what to do. Hallelujah. And then he said, Jesus was so loving. The, the Jesus movie that I watched, the guy that did Jesus, he was just full of smile and his smile was so peaceful. And she said, you treated that lady like she was important, like she was special. He said, yeah, because she's important, because she's special. Everybody is special. Everybody is important. He said, but she... He said, nobody has treated her like that, like that. You know, like 
then I don't think they treated prostitutes with love or something. She said, you treated that woman like she was special. He said, yeah, she is special. Everybody's important. Oh, when I watched that, see, when I watched that movie, there were so many things I learned from it. God is not seeing that thing that people see that make them hate you. He is seeing the original you, the one that he has created to be somebody great. He doesn't see the sinful you. That's why when he, when, when he wipes away your sin, he doesn't remember your sin. He has a different way that he sees you. He sees you as the baby, the, the precious baby. Just like when your parents give birth to you, even if you're 40, 50 years old, they still see you as their baby. My parents still today, I'm 36 years old. My father still sees me as that little girl that he used to carry when I was a baby. That's how God sees you, that precious little one. He doesn't see all the sin in you. He sees that precious one. He sees the one that he has a good plan for. The one that is supposed to make him proud. But the world sees the sin and they hate you. But God doesn't see all that. That's why God forgives you. And he never remembers your sin. He doesn't bring back your sin and say, Oh, remember I forgave you yesterday. No. When Jesus looks at you, Jesus doesn't see what the world sees. He sees that great person, that good woman, that compassionate woman. That woman that loves God, that woman that is going to touch lives. The picture of what Jesus says is different. The other day I was dreaming, God was showing me different people. He was showing me how they are now and he was showing me how they are supposed to be. There was a lady dressed in black, black skirt and a red jacket long braids the skirts were so short that you could see her on these she was like a prostitute she looked all raggedy and all that and god showed me her picture as she looks now and he showed me a picture of how he wants her to look she was in church she had a long skirt black and she had a red jacket she had a hat in church she looked so happy in that picture that he showed me he said this is what i see of her this is how she's supposed to be this is what i made her to be but this is what the devil is making her be right now she needs to be delivered Hallelujah. oh when i saw that another man too he showed me another man he looked so fat and ob obese and he looked miserable and and god showed me a picture of him in suit already holding the bible ready to preach he said this is how he's supposed to be but this is how he is now he needs to be delivered it all boils down to loving god once you love god oh everything will change once you love God, even if you don't have money to eat and you tried your best, you can try your best, but God is the one that completes everything you do. You say, Father Lord, I don't have food today, but I have you, Lord. I know you will fill me up and I know you will make a way. I am not worried. I have tried my best, but I just want to worship you now, Lord, because I know you will never forsake me. You told me you would take care of me if I do, if I live a righteous life, if I, if I seek you and I live righteously. You said you would give me everything I want. I don't have food now, so I know you're working out some plans for me to give me food. But for now, I just want to worship you. I want to thank you for life. Thank you for making me see today. Let me just worship you, Lord. I love you so much. Some people did not make it today, but they have a lot of food in their fridge, but they died. What is the use of the food in your fridge when you don't have life? What is the use of getting a big mansion when you don't have life? Who's going to live in it? I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Everybody say that. Type it. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Everybody type that. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Tell Jesus you love him. Just tell him. Just say, I love you, Jesus, everybody. I will love the Lord. 
Rap and they bobo so tananana. Just say, I love you, Jesus. Just say, I love you, Jesus. Everybody say, I love you, Jesus. 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 John 15 13, it says, Greater love had no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. He said, There's no love greater than this, that somebody should die for his friends. Can you die for your friends that hate you so much? Think about this before you answer this question. You know these friends don't like you, but you're willing to die for them. They even tell you to your face they don't like you. And all you've done is help them, do good things for them. Would you die for them? No, you won't. He said, greater love had no man than this, that a man lay his life for his friends. That's what Jesus came here to do. He came to die for us. Even when we didn't love him. I love you, Jesus. That make it all. He make it all things. I will love the Lord. He make it all. Rapala Handorehe. Romans 5 8. He said, But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God showed his love towards us that he had to send Christ to die for us while we were yet sinners. That's what I was talking about. John 3 16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Do you believe in God? He says if you believe in God you will not perish. If you believe in Jesus you will not perish. You will have everlasting life. Because he sent Jesus to die for you. And now the only way you can be saved is through, through Jesus by believing in him. You will not perish, you will live forever. Meaning when you when you when your time is up, you won't go to hellfire. You will make heaven. You won't burn in that fire. You will live forever. Everlasting life. If you're watching me and you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, I want you to say this salvation prayer after me. I want you to say this prayer after me. Ezekiel 18.20 says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. So you're not going to be blaming your sin on, Oh, my dad was never going to church. That's why I didn't go to church. No, that's between you and God. You don't have to blame your dad. God is not judging your dad because if you know, he's judging you one by one, everybody. If you sin, you're going to die. If you sin, you're going to die. God is avoiding that. That's why he wants you to repent. That's why he wants you to repent. Jesus Christ is knocking right now. He's knocking at your door in your heart. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Revelation 3.20 He's knocking. He's talking to you right now. Repent. You want to repent because Jesus is speaking to you right now. He's knocking. Let him in so he can fight for you, so he can help you. So he can send, he can tell God to send you the Holy Ghost so the Holy Ghost can teach you how to love God, how to love Jesus. You can't do it by yourself. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. You cannot be, you cannot say I love God, but you don't want to repent. You don't want to believe in Jesus. You don't want to accept him as your Lord and personal Savior. There's no other way. You have to come through Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way to God. 
There's no other way. The other day I preached about how Jesus Christ gives light. He lights up your life, your world. He's the light of the world. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Matthew 22, 37 to 38. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love thy Lord, thy God, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The song that you are listening to, God taught me that song. I was sleeping and I saw angels singing this song. And God woke me up and told me to record it. I will love the Lord that make it all. It goes like this. Ye shall love the Lord that make it all. I didn't even know it was the first commandment. I just repented then. I was just preaching newly on Facebook. But that was my first encounter with God. I saw angels singing the song. There were so many angels that were so happy. Going like this. Going like this. Oh, the song sounded so good. You shall love the Lord that make it all. God told me to teach that song to everybody. He said, that's his first commandment. He said, wherever I go to preach, I must sing that song. Because he says, angels will come and sing with whoever is singing it. Because it's a, it's a heavenly song. It's a song they sing to God in heaven. That's why whenever you sing it, you feel the presence around you. The presence of God. I will love the Lord. I will love the Lord. He make it all. Say this prayer after me. If you want to give your life to God. If you want to make peace with him. If you want to start to love God. If you feel bad that you've deserted him. If you feel bad that you've forsaken him. If you feel bad that you've abandoned him. Say this prayer. Just say this prayer. Your life will change. I didn't love God before. I was probably worse than some of you guys. I didn't go to church for 15 years. I was blaming God for when my marriage crashed. I was blaming him for everything. I actually hated God at some point. I didn't even think God performed miracles. I didn't even think God was even real. I was just mad at God for no reason. I didn't even know I would be the same one coming online preaching and telling people to love God. It's so strange. You see how God works? The person that didn't go to church for 15 years, the person that at some point stopped believing in God, the person that blamed all her problems on God, is the same one that's coming here telling you to love God. <laughs> Just like Apostle Paul, when he was Saul, when he was persecuting the believers, when he was, you know, when he was persecuting the, the believers, Jesus arrested him. And before you know it, he started to preach. If you're watching this video, just focus. The devil and his agents, you know, when we do videos like this, he sends his agents to come and Comment on the videos. It's Facebook. You're going to see the good, the bad, the ugly. Ignore them. Focus on the message. You can see they don't love God. So when you see this message that I'm telling, telling you about, there are people that don't love God. Don't worry about their comments. They're free. God is going to arrest them at the right time. Don't worry about them. Just focus on the message. So I was talking about how I never loved God. And all of a sudden, I'm the same one here preaching about loving God. <laughs> Can you believe this? Sometimes I go and I think back, I'm like, there was a day that I clearly tell, I told God, I said, you hate me, you hate me. If you didn't hate me, why am I going through this? I wonder how God was feeling when I was saying all those things. <laughs> and now I'm the same one that will wake up every day telling him I love him. Even in my sleep, I'm telling him I love him. I'm preaching to everybody, love God, love God, love God. A few years ago, I was singing another song. I was saying something else. But God is merciful. He forgave me for all those things I said about him. Even though he saved my life while I was in that marriage. 
He still forgave me for blaming him. And he's still using me right now. He's a merciful God. Do you see how he loves us? Because he told me I would have died several times when I was still in that marriage. He saved me from it. And all that time I was blaming him for my problem. Meanwhile, he was busy saving me from dying. So why would I love this God? Tell me. If you want to repent, go ahead and say this prayer after me. Say, Father Lord, I come into your presence as a sinner. I confess all my sins. Please forgive me. I will never go back to my old ways. I believe that Jesus Christ came and died for me on the cross of Calvary. So that my sins can be wiped away. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Be the Lord over my life. I promise to serve you forever and ever. I promise to love you forever and ever. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone that said this prayer, I'm praying for you. From today, you will begin to love God like never before. In the name of Jesus. You will never go back to your old ways. In Jesus' name. Be filled with the Holy Ghost wherever you are. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. He will teach you how to love God. He will teach you how to love Jesus. He will teach you the things about God. He will help you become a better believer. In the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Like I said, just ignore the devil and his agents and just focus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For everyone that wants to speak in tongues. For everyone that wants to speak in tongues. Because I hear some of you want to speak in tongues. Go ahead and tell God, God, I have repented. I love you. I love Jesus. I want to speak in tongues. Please give me the gift of tongues. Please give me the gift of tongues. Go ahead and pray that prayer. I will not abuse this gift. I will use it to your glory. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray it. For one minute. And I will pray for you. And you will begin to speak in tongues. And if you're here watching and you already speak in tongues, but you want to speak in tongues more. Somebody told me yesterday, she said she can only speak in tongues for less than five minutes. And that's it. That she wants to speak in tongues for more than five minutes. And she said that she says the same thing all the time. So if you're here, you want a new tongue. If you're looking for a new tongue, you want God to help you speak in tongues more than the way you're speaking it now. Pray, tell God, give me a new tongue. I want to be fluent in tongues. I want to speak in tongues for hours, not just for minutes. I will pray for you. And God will answer. God always answers prayers. Riga baba ba son te de 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 Raka nera bo shan te de 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 Rapla ha son de kaloso le inda ha le konda ha Ora baba baba sen te de 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 I want to pray for you right now Father Lord I pray for everybody That is asking for the gift of tongues Give them this gift oh God Give them this gift oh God in the name of Jesus, they promise to use it to your glory. They promise to use it to your glory. Holy Spirit, take over them. Receive the gift of speaking in tongues, all of you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Anyone that wants to be fluent in tongues, receive fluency in the name of Jesus. Anyone that wants to speak a new tongue, receive a new tongue in the name of Jesus. Now begin to speak in tongues by faith, all of you. Speaking tongue by faith. Ba 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 ba. La 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 la. 
Just speak in tongues by faith for the next one or two minutes. And the Holy Spirit will take over your tongue. And you will begin to speak in tongues. Do it by faith. Do it by faith. Don't stop. Speak in tongues by faith. Speak in tongues by faith. Kapale po sotene kotoraba se terelele. Roplan ne kashaka torante rebo sonta kandereko. Speak in tongues. Don't stop. All of you speak in tongues. Type in tongues if you have to type in tongues. Pakate kora kapale katore ba 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 ba. I cover this video with the blood of Jesus. Any war that has been shed by the devil be consumed by fire in the name of Jesus. Any monitoring spirit, monitoring where you, wherever you go, be consumed by fire in the name of Jesus. Any witches or wizards tormenting your life, be consumed by fire in the name of Jesus. We love God. The ones that don't love God. I pray that the Holy Spirit will arrest them and they will begin to love God in the name of Jesus. We love the Lord and make it all. God loves everybody. But a lot of people in this world hate God despite everything he's done for them. I pray that the Holy Spirit will touch them and they will begin to love God in the name of Jesus. We have to keep preaching the gospel. We have to keep telling people to love God. Because we love them and we want to save them. The devil has messed with some people. He has possessed some people. He speaks through some people. We have to keep praying for souls. For lost souls. That's why Jesus came. For lost souls. Kakare kapone prasa teke noro kotoranka derambo sonega ha. Our fasting will start tomorrow. I'm gonna post it. The information we're gonna do it Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's gonna be water only, no food. But if you can't stay without food, you can do six to twelve or six to six. You can eat at twelve, or you can break at six. But for those that are used to fasting with me, you can go without food for three days from now till Saturday. You'll be fine. And we pray four times a day. And you know what? The title for this fast is, Oh Lord, please change my story. Oh Lord, please change my story. He told me that today, this morning. Oh Lord, please change my story. And your story will change after these three days of fasting. You will begin to fulfill your destiny. The story that the devil has written for you will be erased. And the story that God has for you will begin to manifest in your life. In the name of Jesus. So just get ready. Tomorrow we start fasting. At midnight today, we're going to start the first prayer. We pray at midnight, 12 o'clock, midnight central time. At 6 in the morning, at 12 p.m., at 6 p.m. We'll call into the prayer line and we'll pray. I will post the information for everybody that wants to join us. I pray that God will give you the strength to join us in the name of Jesus. And yesterday I announced that if you want me to anoint an oil for you, go get olive oil. I will anoint it here on Facebook. I've done it on the prayer line before. A lot of us have oils, but I've never done it on Facebook. So go get an oil. I'll probably do it on Friday or Saturday, maybe the last day of the fast. But I want everybody to get an oil. If you know somebody that would like to have an anointed oil, invite them. Get them. Get them to get oil so I can pray over the oil. And they can use it to anoint their house and use it whenever they want. I will post the prayer line information on my status. Just make sure you follow me or you add me as a friend. Whenever we do fast like that, there's so many testimonies. So many testimonies. Go to my Facebook page. Go to the album. You will see testimonies. 
A lot of them came from when we had the fast. Instant testimonies. Things happen. I'm so excited. Because the last one we did was like two two months ago and people have been want, wanting us to do but I can't just do fasting unless the Holy Spirit leads me because God moves mightily and if he tells me to do it he will move so prepare your mind feel free to share this video so more people can watch and people can join us to fast when we do group fasting like that it's so easy because we pray every six hours before you know it is over <laughs> A lot of you will receive spiritual gifts. In the last fasting, some people were getting the gifts of prophecy. Some people were getting the gifts of healing. Some people were getting the gifts of miracles. Some people got the gifts of tongues, interpretation of tongues. Hallelujah. A lot of spiritual gifts. A lot of people were getting delivered. It's just a powerful fast. Because we actually pray. You know, some people, they do fasting and they don't pray. They just wait for 6 o'clock to come. So they can eat. They're looking at the time. They're cooking the food and getting ready. <laughs> I know some people that fast like that. They'll be like, when is 6 o'clock going to get here? I want to eat. They don't pray. They just, you're not fasting. You're just dieting. You're probably starving yourself so you can lose weight. Ours is strictly prayers. We pray, 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 pray. No food. The spirit is active. The flesh is weak. We kill the flesh. You will dream. Oh, I'm hearing it. Some of you will have an encounter with God. You will have heavenly dream. God will give you messages. God will, will come to you in your sleep. You will see angels. It happened last time. Oh, go to that album and read a lot of those testimonies. People were having so many encounters. Life-changing encounters. And it was so encouraging when they were all posting their testimonies. They were sending me their testimonies. I will read some of them. Some of them I even unmuted the line and they gave the testimony themselves. People were like, wow. Even witches were dying. <laughs> so I pray that you will join us to do the fast. And I'm so happy that you ignored all the devil and his agents. Whenever I come online, a time will come when I will have... One day God showed me I was going to have like 100,000 viewers. Do you think that all 100,000 viewers are going to love God? A lot of them may not even want to hear about it. They will come and be cussing confusion, be cussing God, be doing that. But you don't have to pay attention. I saw a video of a man, a black man that was preaching in a country. I think they're like a, a country that don't believe in God. And he was preaching in the park. And all these men ganged up. They were making fun of him. They were almost trying to hit him. But the guy didn't stop. He kept preaching. Oh, somebody posted that video on Facebook. He kept preaching. He said, repent. They were laughing at him. They were laughing at God. They were mocking God. But the man did not stop preaching. Oh, when I was watching that video. I was just speaking in tongues. He didn't stop. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. Do you think the apostles in the Bible, do you think it was always smooth for them to preach? There have been times they have stopped them from preaching. They say, who are we going to listen to you or God? We will not obey you. We will continue talking about Jesus. We will not stop talking about what we've heard and seen. The next day you see them preaching again. Nobody can shut us down. The devil hates it when we preach because like today's message is to love God. The devil hates it when people love God because now you, you won't fall for his tricks no more. <laughs> you won't fall for his tricks no more. He's losing people. So he's going to do anything to stop it. It's normal. Sometimes... God may send you to go to a place where there is nobody that believes in God. And God wants to bring revival to that place. God wants to change people there. God wants to, to free people from bondage. And you're the only one preaching God. And God said, do not be afraid. I'm going with you. I will be with you. And you go there and people are even stoning you sometimes. But because you remember what God says, I will be with you. Do not be afraid. You preach with boldness. And you let God do his work. 
When you love God, you don't see nothing that the devil is doing. You don't pay attention to the evil works of the enemy. You focus on what God told you to do. That's how you know you love God. You are blinded to the works of the enemy. The devil is upset. He wants to kill a lot of people. He wants a lot of people to join him in hell. Even in this video, you see some of the comments. You see what people are saying about how they love the devil. You see how real it is. When I see it, I just feel sorry for them. <laughs> I feel sorry for them. Because the devil has his grip on them. Like It's like... And after using them to do all this, he's going to kill them. <laughs> and they will go to hell. And God is there sorrying for them. Praying. And God is trying to see how he can bring them to him. That's why he's sending me out here to preach. Jesus is grieving for them. Their families too are grieving for them. Unless if their families have been possessed by the devil too. It's real out there. A lot of people don't love God. That's why the Holy Spirit said, go and tell them to just love God. I pray that you that is watching me, from today, you will love God like never before in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. By the time we finish that fast, some of you will be so strong spiritually. Oh, some of you, oh my God. Some of you, You'll be so strong spiritually. Oh, rapande de bo sote na 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 na. Rakasote ne bo sante kaha. Some of you will be so powerful in the Lord. Nobody will take you away from Him again. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Let's just worship the Lord. Get on. I will love the Lord. I will love the Lord that make it all. He make it all. Just worship the Lord. Tell him you will love him. Tell him you love him. Because he loved you first. Just tell him you love him. He's the only one that matters right now. Jesus, I love you. Have you noticed this is the only song I've played throughout this video? It is so soothing. Some of you will leave this video and you'll be playing this song in your head. Because you've been hearing it for over an hour. It has to sink in your head. You will love the Lord and make it all. And you will pray for souls, lost souls. I pray for anyone that is lost. I pray that God will touch them and bring them to him in the name of Jesus. I pray for all of you that have spent time to watch this video. That God will open doors for you. In the name of Jesus. God will bless you financially. In the name of Jesus. God will give you divine breakthrough in all areas of your life. In the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that you need from God. As long as it is according to his will. I pray that God will give it to you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord. For this wonderful message. Everybody type it. Say thank you Lord for this message. 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 Thank you Lord. Thank you Jesus. We love you Jesus. We love you Jesus. I'm so happy. Oh when you have the love of God. Like when you love God. When you, when you have love in your heart for God. It's like nothing else matters. You're just happy. You're just happy. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. God bless you all for sharing. We have so many shares. If you haven't shared it, feel free to share it. Stay tuned on my page. I will post about the um, fasting in a few minutes. And we will start tomorrow. Remember to log in at 12 midnight on the prayer line to pray with us. Central time. It's currently 10:10 10, 10 here. 10:10, 10, 10. 12 midnight my time. So whatever your time is, 
I don't know if it's 10 o'clock in your area. It's 10, 10 a.m. in the morning. 10, 10 a.m. I'm in Houston, so it's central time. So I'll see you soon on the prayer line. Unless if God makes me come back. I actually have another message about being a good citizen. I told you guys yesterday. I will see if I'll come out night today and give it. Otherwise, I'll give it tomorrow. But I love you guys. Stay blessed. And love the Lord. And make it all. In the name of Jesus. Bye-bye.